I'm Narayan Hosmani and I'm a Presidential Research Professor at the beginning and a Distinguished Research Professor and Board of Trustees Professor. And I uh, teach here and I do research on uh, cancer. Well, it's an interesting story. Uh, when I was in college, I was very much interested in silicon hydrides. Actually, all the hydrides are the main group element, but among them, silicon hydrides and boron hydrides. Because uh, both of them catches fire, uh, one, uh, the silicon hydride, which will glow with the yellow flame, and then the boron hydrides, when it burns, it will give the green flame. So it's really interesting. So anyway, I ended up with the silicon hydride. And I did very well. I enjoyed it because this is the time when silicon was, especially silicon hydride, were used as the starting material to make the 100% or the 99% for a semi industry. industry. A great site, I made a lot of interest in chemistry. And then, at that time, Huntsville, Alabama had a Red Star Arsenal, which is the U.S. Army the research headquarters. And they really wanted this uh, rocket to propel into the Cold War era. And they were using boron hydride as the fuel for B-60 bombers. And they were very much interested in burning lane modifiers. And they told me that I should work in uh, Auburn University, Alabama, which is not very far from here. And I worked there for the Rockets Union, my Boron Chemistry Research in California. And that was the beginning, had a strange story, but now that is my favorite company. The reason is silicon is good, but there is some restriction. Uh, uh, you cannot really explore. Silicon and boron is located in the periodic chart, they have neighbors. But the silicon has all the electrons uh, enough to fill all the atomic problems. So that means we call it electron the size. But boron has funny thing, they have all the orbit, but one electron less is called electron diffusion. Now because it's electron diffusion, it makes the cage structures, like the cage structures, beautiful structures. And the property is really exciting. The boron can lead to application which would be useful for them, but also that was the economics. And I think we can save some lives. So I started this the idea of using my chemistry into the application and then the better cancer Although cancer research is the favorite thing, but among them, which is my favorite, but one thing I found out most fascinating. I think if this is successful, definitely, and that would be, in my opinion, the best boron drug, which can really cure a lot of these different kinds of cancers. Now you may ask what that is. Make medical. Now, lots of drugs we deliver, by the way, intravenously. Not all the compounds, not all the boron drugs go uniformly each cancer cell, because that's the way the nature is. One cell will get grabbed more, another cell will grab less. Unless you have 30 to 35 micrograms per nanotube, or in other words, 10 to the power of 9, 4 on 10 atoms per cell, you would have that effect 100% healing of the cancer cell. To deliver that much, we tried so many different now the drug will not work the heat cell, but when you use a 1.4 Tesla, the magnetic power, then you can induce the endocytosis. Endocytosis is the mechanism where the drug is delivered to the heat cell. There are several kinds of endocytosis, but endocytosis should have some sort of receptor or some sort of mechanism which can easily vary. But not every cell has the same sort of mechanism. But what we could do, you can force it. How can we force it? If you have a magnetic nanoparticles along with the boron drug, then you can use an external magnet and you can pull the boron drug to go inside the heat cell. And we were able to do it. When we did that, surprisingly, we wanted 30 micrograms per nanotube. But we ended up with 74 micrograms per nanotube, which we never, ever seen anywhere in the literature. Is there anything going on to prevent the cancer? 
My answer is yes. Every single person can do that. Although we have a lot of research going on, the research is the genetic mapping. So that means we can tell even before the cancer appears. Soon after they were born, we can have the genetic mapping. And they can tell. But more than anything else, which I believe in, you cannot think negative. But we can avoid thinking negative. We always think negative. Thought is half full, is better than that. That's what I would say. And this is my advice. Wherever I go, I thought of that. You can control yourself. Prevention is better than you.